So hello everybody, welcome back. I thought today I would do something a little different again. And today I wanted to share with you my bullet journals. I started out bullet journaling, um, let's see, when is this, 2016. Um, and I have been bullet journaling, bullet journaling in some form or another since then, so five years. Um, this was back when I was doing it in a Loish term. Um, my very first bullet journal was this one. I, I have a couple others here I thought I would walk through and show you. Uh, the evolution, and I still bullet journal in some form right now. I'm bullet journaling in the back of my Hobonichi Weeks Mega and doing my daily bullet journaling back there. I also have a work bullet journal that I use for everything that's related to my job which I'm gonna to try to figure out how I can show you some of that because some of the things that I do there are slightly different than what I do personally. And I thought it would be interesting to show you that from a work perspective, but I'm trying to figure out how to do that without sharing any um, com confidential information that I can't share. So as soon as I figure that out, I'll share that with you. But what I thought I'd do now is just kind of walk you through some old bullet journals um, and just show you some of the things that I've done in the more traditional style of bullet journaling um, as compared to what I have done in my Hobonichi weeks. So this, again, is my very first bullet journal that I started in 2016. And actually, it's funny, whenever I look at this, I remember when I got this very, very vividly because my daughter had back surgery and she was um, in the hospital for a week. And I ordered this the week before her surgery and I remember my husband bringing this to me in the hospital and sitting in the hospital, setting this up while she was recovering or, you know, going through um, the post-op for that, that back surgery. She had spinal fusion, so it was pretty significant surgery, but I guess it just had a profound impact on me that I was doing this setup at the same time. And I think I've said this in another video, um, but I'll say it again. What I have learned about myself is that when I feel out of control in my life, the way I grasp at control is planning. And so um, looking back, I was apparently feeling very out of control, understandably so, with my daughter um, and her surgery. And so I set up a bullet journal. Um, so I'll show you just a little bit about this. So again, um, not to beat a dead horse, which is a terrible phrase to say, but Coco Daisy stickers here on the front um, and Coco Daisy tabs along the side. I'll show you those. Um, so Coco Daisy stickers along the side here, and I'll show you just some of the other things. Um, so 2016, I stuck in the front, just a overview calendar that I had downloaded offline. Um, had just some general stickers here in the front a key so I would remember my color coding and the um, the indicators that I was going to be using. And then here was my index. Wow, it's really funny to walk through and look at this from 2016. So um, this was stuff where I started in the back. So some things I started from the back forward, some things I had in the front. And that's what I was trying to do here was just indicate the differences. Um, forward plans. So this is pages are sticking together. This was a version of my forward planning that I had done. Had the days or the months here and then wrote things down. And I was trying to follow as much as I could Ryder Carroll's method for bullet journaling, but obviously throwing some color in because I like color. Um, but you can see I ran out of space. July is a busy month for us with, with birthdays. And so this I didn't do moving forward into other books just because it was it just was not enough room. It was pretty, but it just didn't have enough room. Um, so here's where I had my daughter's school schedules, and then I would draw in the month. Um, and then this again, Coco Daisy stickers. And then this is where I thought I was gonna do a habit tracker, but you can see I said, nope, not worth the trouble. Just wasn't gonna do it. And then I stuck in just some random uh, randomness that I liked. That was, this was the very first week. Um, and so I tried to replicate like a week at a glance and did my hours, one square for each hour. And then down here I had personal and work and then this was gonna be notes in this section. Here's where I was writing notes to myself about what 
um, was working and not working steps that I had um, and how many floors when I was wearing my Fitbit. Uh, tracker for my medicine, tracker for water, obviously. Either water is not a big priority or tracking it was not a big priority back then. Um, this was a page that I totally screwed up, so I just printed this out and started coloring it to cover it up. And then here is the next week, work personal notes. This was my baby when she got home from the hospital and her sister keeping her company. Um, same basic format for the first couple of weeks. And here's my days. So I was using some stickers that I made myself and printed out and just, you know, train of thought, just like you would do with a bullet journal. Um, this one, this bullet journal, in a way kind of feels like a train wreck because it was so all over the place. But on the other hand, I'm really proud of myself that I just literally did what you should do with a bullet journal, which is embrace the moment, put whatever you think of wherever it was, and um, just kind of let, let things fall out the way they fell out. I didn't try to be necessarily artistic or pretty or cutesy, although you'll see efforts in here. It was really more about just doing whatever was working for me in the moment. Um, so here's some journaling that I stuck in here. Um, and then this was the April calendar. This was a Coco Daisy printable that I printed out and stuck in here and didn't really like the thickness that that added, but it was just an experiment. Um, so here's the next week. That was my daughter's surgery. Um, here's the next week and pretty much followed the same format for a few weeks. I'm trying to see if I stuck any pages together. Um, just trying this out to see how it went. So here's the days. And in this particular case, I was putting work stuff in here as well as personal. That didn't last very long. I didn't like mixing the two, but initially I, again, was trying to follow Ryder Carroll's methodology. And so everything went in this one notebook. Um, here's where I was trying to figure out summer clothes I needed to buy for the kids. Um, I'll just flip through this pretty quickly. I know you don't want to see all the pages. Here's where I was menu planning, um, things I had in the freezer, other ideas, new things to try. And then as you'll see, I stayed in this weekly format for a while. Literally, here's a recipe that I had. Right underneath it was the next day. Here's another recipe that I wanted to try, school schedule for exams. Then this was work-related stuff, notes. Uh, travel plans for work and kept this format up for a few weeks. Let me see if I can find where that changed because it did change after a while. This is May and here's where I tried to replicate kind of what you I have in the Hobonichi where you have you know the blank page after the month or the beginning of the month. So I had goals, menu plans, um, and then this is where it changed. I knew it changed somewhere in here. And so then I started using something very similar to what I had in my rings. I use DIY fish inserts in my rings and have used those when I'm in rings pretty faithfully for years. So basically I just replicated that same layout. So it was a um, horizontal week, very similar to Hobonichi weeks. And then over here I had trackers and my to-do list. Um, and this weekly layout works for me very well. My brain likes it. I put my menu over here, uh, appointments over here. Um, I gravitate towards this weekly layout over and over and over again. So anyway, this is what the very first um, bullet journal I ever did look like. I tried doing a timeline on the days with to-dos. I did not like that. So I um, didn't do it for very long. You can see I taped in things wherever, whenever I wanted to. I just put stuff here with forward planning for the rest of the year. There's a week. This is another thing that I do that I really like. I learned this in a um, uh, planner class that I was evaluating when I managed a training organization for a company. Um, I was in their HR team managing training. And one of the things that the particular class that I took um, recommended was to use a highlighter to cross off your to-do items because then the things that you haven't highlighted jump out at you. Um, and so that's what I was doing here. And I still use that method today. Um, 
So yeah, that's what this original bullet journal, and again, I've said to you before, I'm not artistic, but I like washi and I like stickers. So, and Coco Daisy, thank goodness, has beautiful stuff. So that's, this one, you know, I, I didn't fill it completely up, but I got pretty close. Um, and then from there, I think I moved into a Hobonichi for, in August. This was, yes, I did. I moved into Hobonichi in August. And then from there, I went back into the bullet journal. So this is the next one. Um, and there's not a whole lot of difference in the way I approach things, but I'll just flip through this one really quick to show you. Um, some of the lessons learned, I still love the, the calendar at a glance. These were just things that made me happy, so I glued those in the front. Um, this was my kids' school calendar. I love having that, but you'll see that that whole forward planning debacle is gone. This, actually what I did here was I took a photocopy of the Hobonichi Monthly because I loved it so much and printed it out and taped it in. And I think I did that, yeah, for several months because I liked it so much. Um, so this was September. Um, and then I did a couple of months ahead. So uh, if you've seen some of my other videos, I like to forward plan in what I call a funnel. So I like to have my months for several months out and then work my way down into the weeks and the days. So writer Carol says, do just the month you're working in and you know, then the next month and then the next month that didn't work for my brain. I did not like it. So what I did in this book was I did September, October, and I think through December, um, and I just drew them out um, and filled things out for my forward planning. Actually, it looks like I went into the next year, February. Um, so that's what I did um, and then started my month. This was something I saw somebody else had done and I just took a screenshot of it and printed it because it was so pretty. Again, not artistic. I knew I was never going to be able to draw that, so I just used it. Same weekly layout. It works. I'm not going to change it. Here's my um, work slash personal um, bullet journal, but I was also sticking in stickers, which I really liked. Liked being able to just put everything in one place. Not a whole lot of change in the rest of this and how I was doing things. Here's October, I went back to making a copy of the Hobonichi and just sticking it in because I liked it. Um, let me just, flip through here. I don't think there's a whole lot of change in the way things were just because it worked so well. Um, I didn't change it. Um, lots of work stuff in this particular bullet journal. Mostly work stuff, I think. And then in the back was where I had my um, things that I was tracking back here, um, like your collections and things like that. So books, TV shows, all of that kind of stuff in the back of this one. Um, I love the bright colors that the Loish terms have. So that is my foray into the traditional style of bullet journaling. The things I like about it is the flexibility and the fact that you literally just flip to the next page and you can put whatever you want there, whatever your heart desires, whether it's a to-do list, whether it's um, journaling, whether it's some deep thought and revelation that you've had, or whether it's just, you know, the latest silliness that comes out of your child's mouth. You can put it in there. That's the beauty of bullet journaling. Um, the frustration that I have with bullet journaling is that there's no, um, nothing set up for you. So the flexibility um, is a blessing and a curse in my opinion because I am a forward planner and being a planner both in my job and what I do, but also being the one who keeps all the things, all the balls in the air at home with all the things I have going on with my family, I need the ability to look six months down the road and put in the calendar that, you know, one of my children is going to be gone on a trip and, and you know, re reminders to buy things for that trip or make sure they started packing or done their fundraising or whatever it is. Um, so not having those months ahead to look at was very frustrating for me, which is why really beyond about, I guess, a six month, eight month period of time, um, I didn't really do much with bullet journals. Um, I'll also show you what I did in my Stalogy in another video and just give you an idea of what that looked like. I did use a Stalogy for about 
um, maybe three or four months or maybe even six months last year, um, just as an experiment to see what all the ruckus was about in terms of Stalogies. And I pretty much had the same experience. I liked the flexibility. I hated having to draw stuff in and not feel like I had a place to plan ahead. And if I'm gonna print out a bunch of calendar pages and glue them in or pre-draw things in, I'd rather just pay for a planner that's already set up for me. And I think that's why the Hobonichi Weeks is working so well for me this year because it has all of that stuff drawn in, but then I have 100 and something, 200 pages in the back that I can have the free form to put whatever I need to in the back. Um, and it's still all contained in one book. So um, that's why I'm using what I'm using, but I thought I would share this with you and um, just give you some ideas of how you could use a bullet journal if you wanted to. And like I said, I'll share some of my other planners, um, the Stalogy and how I use rings when I'm planning in rings, as well as my work bullet journal. I'll show you that as well in a future video. If you like this video, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up and I hope that you will uh, subscribe so that you can uh, see the other videos that are coming in the future and keep up with my shenanigans in the world of planners and Hobonichis in particular. Stay healthy, stay well, and take care.